All right, hello and welcome to this lesson on basic coloring, okay? Now when I say coloring, when I do coloring, when I'm adding media to stamped out imagery, post-impression, okay, after making our impressions like that, um, the thing that I am trying to do is I'm trying to not only add hue colors to various objects and areas, but I'm trying to describe things, describe the forms. Are they dimensional or are they flat? Um, what kind of textures do they have? And how do they look when they're reflecting light? Okay, so the difference that I'm talking about between coloring and what I'm doing is it's more rendering, okay? When you're coloring something, we could, might just be coloring in certain areas in a very flat manner, just doing a uniform, maybe single color application of a given hue. But if you kind of just tweak your technique a little bit from that type of idea to using a little bit less of certain colors and adding more of other colors to describe the forms as three-dimensional objects that they might represent, then you're now rendering forms, okay? So here's an example right here. Um, these are the covered bridge large images that I've stamped out here and we'll cover all of these and some different types of media in this lesson here. But here's this finished scene right here and you can see there's variation within the forms. There's darker areas and there's lighter areas within the different objects. So right here on the covered bridge, the side of the bridge is co uh, colored a little bit differently than the top part, okay? Now I think I'm going, I, I really like this uh, one customer's um, rendition of this. It was all red, okay? But she was asking, hey, you know, what do I color the inside of the, uh, the bridge? And uh, what do I do in other parts, okay? Now she had a really good, nice color scheme, but she didn't render her objects, so they were all uniformly colored for the most part. There might've been a little bit of variation, but I was telling her what she needs to do is she needs to push her value schemes a little bit farther. Now she has all the media to do it, but I'm gonna show her how to do it here or anyone else that might be interested. So just some very basics on color applications for the um, sake of rendering form, okay? So there's differences between uh, how things look if they are flat objects such as a circle and maybe another form if it's an orb, right? Okay, so a circle is something that's flat, okay? So we might color it in uniformly because it is sitting on a flat plane. So the top of the stamp right here, I'm just talking about the wood. It's all pretty much uniform in terms of color. Now, when we start introducing some light and reflecting off of it, you know, there's different shades on here because of that reflective quality. Let's see if I can get a little bit of variation on here. That's not quite so extreme, but you can see some little bit of variation right here. Okay. So it's a little bit darker here and a little bit lighter here. That's what I'm doing on these different forms as well. So even a side of an object that might be, you know, flat gets a little bit of a different treatment from one area to the next. And it just doesn't matter how you do it. But let's go back to forms like the. This is the difference between like a circle, okay, that represents a flat object, okay, and an orb, which is something like you know, a ball or something like of that sort, and the rendering of something like this is going to be very different because um, there's different planes on this. It's rounded, okay? So this is going from a dark color to a medium to a light. Okay, now, I mean, it just depends on what kind of light is hitting something. It doesn't have to be all you know, completely dark. But when I say dark, I mean darker. So just variations like that, okay? And we can go nice and dark down at the bottom part like this, okay? And I don't know, maybe a little bit of a highlight up here like so. So this looks more rounded like this and three-dimensional, right? And that's the difference between 
coloring something for kind of rendering purposes. And this is just kind of more of a flat application of color over a given object. That looks very flat. This one looks more dimensional and uh, three-dimensional, I should say. Okay, this one's dimensional too. It's just two dimensions. All right, so we can add that. And you can even add, here's you know, like some shadows, you know, or a shadow being cast by this right here, okay? I'll go for a little bit more of a darker shadow at the base of this object. And then it just kind of dissipates as you go away from it, okay? So that is a th more of a three-dimensional object, flat object. Single value coloring, multiple value coloring right here, okay? Just using the same pen right here. But that's the way you can look at different objects, okay? Now, in my designs, the things that I'm trying to do on all of my designs is I'm trying to render forms so that they look more three-dimensional. I see designs all the time where, you know, there's a rock or something like that. The rocks drive me crazy from certain, uh, you know, designs that I've seen. And it's just like that. But then they just put, kind of put a few dots on it because they, they're not really rendering the form or thinking of it as a three-dimensional object. So something like this, you can see darker forms in here as it transitions off into lighter areas. Um, within smaller forms like this, different uh, objects and um, clusters of foliage rendered together like that. Forest floor area, variations in tone, shadows, light, um, representing kind of a, a an irregular flat area. They're not, sta you know, positioned in concrete or something very hard and flat, okay? You can see the changing of the forms in there. So when you look at something like these trees in here, you can see there's darks and lights within there. Now I'm going to show you how to use those cues for your coloring strategies, okay? Which will lead to your rendering strategies, okay? So you're going to be representing light in here. All right, now let's just go with, uh, let's just go, let's stay with um, a very basic color scheme. Let's say that we're doing these trees in, I've already done this in uh, these uh, fall tones right here. Let's say that these trees are more in springtime or something like that. Just be, because, let's just keep it simple and keep to a certain um, color scheme here, okay? Or, or range, I should say, instead of going into yellows and oranges and reds, let's keep this really simple, all right? So one of the things that I always teach people when we're doing um, different coloring strategies on our scenes, a lot of times it's for backgrounds, if it's a kind of a monochromatic style of design, uh, lighting design, um, sunsets, reds, yellows, oranges, or something like that transitioning in the background, or nighttime types of scenes, blue tone transitions, light blue, medium blue, dark blue, etc. Okay, but for coloring something like this, let's just go with some of these greens in here. Let's say that um, it's a springtime type of situation and we're going to utilize these strategically, okay? Now, one of the things that a lot of times when people look at kind of the final results is they might look at something like this and say, okay, there's only yellow inks up here. In this case, it was colored pencils done on this scene, but those yellows are all underneath there too, in terms of the colored pencils, not the paint pens, okay? Or they might see some lighter greens right here and think that the lighter greens are only down there and the darker greens are right in here in the shadows but the lighter greens are throughout this whole area and then the darker greens are just in the shadow areas. So what you're getting is these base layer co coats. These have been stamped in um, dye based inks, by the way, so that I can use my colored pencils or you know alcohol inks or whatever I wanted to on the coloring process. If I stamp this out in uh, uh, like a Claire or a Versafine or something like that, those look great, okay, but you would color those more with a compatible media. If you color those sometimes with alkalines, they go back into solution. Just as an aside here, okay? Okay, so here's 
a very light tone. It's light and bright though. It's it's pretty it's pretty vivid. All right. But here's what we're doing right here on our trees, okay? We can go in and we can fill this area in. This is coloring now, okay? I'm not so much rendering. We'll do our rendering with our other um, inks in conjunction with this first one, okay? So going in here and coloring in like so. A lot of times I vary it a little bit more and I don't color it things in quite so uniformly, but I want to just kind of emphasize the process right here, okay? So some other grass. Now I'm going to fill this out with some additional um, imagery later. I figured um, I was going to stamp one of these right here and another one up here just upside down, you know, just to show examples of this coloring process, but I thought, eh, we might as well, if we're going to take the time to do all this coloring on here, we might as well utilize this later. So I'll finish it off later. Okay, so that is the greens right there. Okay, that that's one of my lighter colors of greens that I'll be using in here. Now, if you have an even lighter one, you can do that. I didn't know if I wanted to go like super, super pale with my first one, like this one right here that you can barely see. Okay, you know, I just, I, I don't want to take too long on this um, kind of whole um, concept and uh, demonstration here, okay? But, okay, let's go with the next tone, okay? So this one right here, this one is just used right here. We're going with this one. This one is a uh, apple green, all right? And it's just a little bit darker. What you're doing is you're just grabbing all of the, the pens that you have or markers or whatever you're working with, colored pencils, chalks, whatever. And then you're just going to your next one right here. But here's the thing. Okay, now this is not going to be just used to color in everything uniformly, okay? We have two other darker colors to come. Let me put this one out of the way, okay? So I do want to get pretty decent coverage with this one. But look at this. See where I am going in to my darker areas within these trees like this, these tree branches like that, but I'm leaving the tops now a little bit lighter, just the straight application of this lightest one, okay? Now, I mean, you don't have to, it's not so cut and dry, like, oh my gosh, you know, I I made that branch darker when I shouldn't have. It's, an, it's not like that, it's not, you know, you don't have to be so, you know, exacting with this. Uh, placement of this color. The, the bottom line is you're, you're just varying it a little bit more than your first color, okay? Now you can think about something like this. Here's, you know, these trees in here and you want to create a little bit more of a shaded area with this. Okay, you can do that. Now I'm going down here in the grasses as well. The grassy areas have these little tufts. There's little darker areas, right? I'm just going over with this pen and I'm going in and redefining or uh, further defining these little shadow areas like that, okay? See, because it's it's done, it's, I'm going over my black areas basically, okay? All right, we have that. I used it a little bit more sparingly, the darker you go. Like I said, you just use it a little bit more sparingly. Now, the, out of these two, this one is lighter than this one, so I'll use this one, okay? And I'll use this one even more sparingly. I'm going into that shadow area like this, okay? Shadow areas, meaning the black areas, and I'm just kind of reiterating the shadow or whatever's been established as darker areas in the design. So you just look for the areas that are black, okay? And you do a little, you know, kind of a small application. It's like this here and there, okay? All right, that is that. But do you see that variation in here? It's looking, the forms are looking a little bit more round because we've retained some of those lighter areas on there, okay? Now let's go to the dark uh, green and we'll really add in some shading. Now I'm really staying in that shaded area, okay? And then it's just kind of smaller applications of the darker colors like this, okay? 
Maybe it's a little dot of it or something like that. Now these are alcohol pens, so this pen right here is quite a bit darker than my previous color. Okay. This is a semi-gloss cardstock, so not exactly blended in very well. All right. So what I'll do is I'll just go back in with my lighter one, any one of these though, and I'm going to blend in that darker tone with this light one again. I like that. I like doing that with my alcohol pens because um, before the darker colors set up, I can go back in and blend those out with my lighter tones. Okay, it's almost like you're using a lighter color as almost like a blending um, pen, you know, those clear alcohol pens. Okay. But can you see the variation that's happening now within the different forms? They look a little bit more three-dimensional this way, okay? By not having every bit of the entire tree line uniformly um, colored and shaded, okay? All right, so you get those different tones there within that space, okay? See, so it goes from darker areas to lighter areas like that. Now let's look at this um, covered bridge. All right, let's see if we have some kind of a, like a little bit of a rustic red or something like that. Um, I'm trying to see if I have enough lighter tones. Let's, let's go with the something like this okay uh man maybe not that one right there i'm trying to find a, if i have a pink i don't have a really great range of this one well maybe i do let's go in with something like this i don't necessarily want my bridge to be um orange or pink okay but it's just those are kind of uh tones that can lead up to this red right here. See, it's kind of going from lighter tones into the darker tones. Pink is kind of a lighter version of red, right? So let's try that right there. Okay, so in rendering, I'm gonna start off with my lighter tones and then work darker. This is transparent colors, by the way, okay? So this lighter tone, I'm filling in this whole bridge like this, okay? Yeah, you can go with your um, brickwork down below, too, if you want to. I'm kind of smearing around some of this ink. I just stamped it out before I came on. Okay, now here's this road as well. Let's see. Make sure I'm not out of focus here. And we're going down this road like this. Okay. Now, I need to add in some additional imagery right here, but, you know, we're just talking about this... Um, bridge. Now one of the things that you, you can do too is you can bring in some of these other colors into your trees just so they're not like completely different color schemes. All right, the whole thing was colored in, but rooftops tend to be a little bit lighter unless it's like the color of the roof is different. It's black or something like that, you know, in real life, okay. But if all these areas are kind of the same color, the rooftop is going to be kind of top lit by the light coming down, okay? So I've made the side of my covered bridge darker through the use of stippling, you know, the little dots on there. I don't have any stippling up top here so that, you know, the form itself, when you stamp it out, looks darker on this side, okay? So going on with a little bit of darker tone, let's go down like this and we'll color in the side. But look at this underneath here. I can do these little bricks like that. So, it's a little bit different like that. I'll have a little bit of a rooftop uh, underneath the eaves a little bit darker. But see, yeah, doesn't it look more three-dimensional that way now, too? Yeah, let me see here. Let me add a little bit of tone up here, too. Oh, just to vary it a little bit, maybe um, some of the trees are casting a shadow on the roof. Okay, let's blend that out a touch lighter tone that I already did use on there. I'm just going back into it and kind of blending it a little bit. Okay. See that right there? 
Now, let's go to uh, this one right here. It's a little bit more of a, well, yeah, maybe that one was lighter. <laughs> a little bit more of a warmer tan. Let's go ahead and add that in there anyways. Go ahead and add it on the inside of the bridge as well. Let's see, I almost forgot about the road here. Let's go in and add a little bit of tone on the road. And I'll vary the road a little bit as well. I can add some of this into my trees like this. Oh, orange, that is, that scares me a little bit. That's really bright. Okay, now let's say this bridge is painted red. That's the way my customer did it. And I've seen that red bridge before, um, covered bridge, and it looks really cool. Now uh, let's see, I'm a little bit, like I said, nervous about this red. It's so dark right here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll merge it, okay? I'll go with this, some of this red, which is really red, like this, and I'll lay some of it down. If you have kind of an intermediate one, maybe it's better. It's not so dark. And let's go back to this pink, right? Pink is a lighter version of red in many cases, okay? And I'll just blend that red in a little bit more like that, okay? Like about like so, okay? So we got a nice red bridge. I should do that more often. I always make it kind of unfinished, but it, you know, bridges would be nicely painted and preserved and whatnot. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna leave the orange out of it. That'll make it too orangish in tinge, I think. But instead of doing that, why don't I use like a little bit of a brownish, you know, tinge right here. Let's go a little bit darker on the side of this um, covered bridge. Like this. I'll use some of this on the inside. But see that now? Doesn't that look nicely rendered to you? Uh, I like that color. We'll use some of this down in our trees. And maybe being cast, uh, shadow being cast here. Down in this water area. Like about like that. But see that variation, right? variation in my trees, variation in my bridge, in the different sides of the bridge. See, this side of the bridge is darker than the front, and the rooftop's a little bit lighter overall. Let's give this a little bit more of a tone right there, just for a little bit more variation. How about this road right here? Let's give this a little bit more of a variation on the side. Have it going in there a little bit into this grassy area. Okay, so you get that. A little bit of water down here, right? Let's look at some different blue tones like this. All right, light, medium, darker. Start off with the lightest one. This could be all filled in uniformly, but let's vary it, okay? This is a very, very light blue. It almost looks like a blending tool or something like that, it's so light. But believe me, there's some blue in that, okay? Um, what I was showing people yesterday is I bring some of that into my meadow areas too, so a lot of times, or my roads, you know, the lightest of blues. That is that. Now with the blues, I don't have, you know, there are some little shadows in here being cast by some of these rocks, and I'm going in there and kind of going around some of that. You don't have to stick with it, um, but water is very reflective so i'd like to have some variation in there see where it's lighter down here and it's darker over here well that bridge would probably be casting some light down there but again you don't have to make that up that darker area is right there in the designs so i'm just going over and i'm coloring in my darker areas that are in the design. You don't have to invent your light if you don't want to. You can, you can say light is hitting this side of the bridge and this whole area is illuminated, you know, and there's darker shadows over here or something, but you don't have to, you know, you don't have to completely invent everything. I have all of those different types of shading um, elements right in the design. I even have little shadows at the base of all these little rocks down here, okay? So again, I'm going in with this darker blue like that. It's a little bit too vibrant, right, right now. 
So you go back into your lighter ones like this and just blend that out a little bit. You might even be removing some of that black or blue. You know, when you go in and color in there. But again, don't color everything completely uniform. See that lighting hitting that water in right in there? That's what you want. You want that variation in all of your different areas. If it represents rounded forms, um, reflective forms like water and such. And that's what you have right there. So that's just coloring with transparent medias. That's, what, that's how the approach that you would take with um, colored pencils, um, dye based inks. Uh, what else? Um, maybe chalks or uh, pastels or something like that. Okay, so what do we have right here? Let's do a little recap, okay? So we have variations in here. Do you see these lights and darks within the um, foliage in here? We have lights and darks within the rooftop here. There's lighter area right here, darker area up top. The, uh, the covered bridge on the side right here gets a little bit darker on this side. Going in here with a little bit of green. <laughs> it just looks dark, I mean, you know, but see here, now that looks different than this side. So the form looks more dimensional that way, doesn't it? It looks more like a, not an orb, but it looks like a three-dimensional object when you treat three different sides of it that we can see differently. The interior is a little bit darker. Different color schemes in here, different value schemes, I, I should say, not color schemes but there's lights and darks within here. And again, all I've done is I've colored in my darker areas like this with the darker tones, okay? But the lighter tones up top remain light like that, right? All right, so let's see here. Oh, and the road, and this road is a significant portion as well. Do you notice the darker areas on the road and then some lighter areas? All right, so that is just coloring. Now, eh, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to go into paint pens, but these paint pens are lighter tones. So let's say, oh my gosh, I, I uh, filled in too much. I don't have any light areas anymore. I got heavy handed and carried away and I colored everything in, okay? If you have some paint pens, you can go in and redefine lighter areas because these are opaque, okay? Well, a little bit more opaque than, you know, inks, you know, like dye-based inks or alcohol inks, but they look great for kind of that shimmering finish anyway, all right? So let me show you where you add that. Well, where do you add something like this? Well, these are the lighter tones, so you add it on the top portions, as, you know. So when we're coloring with media like this, as we get incrementally darker, we stay to the shadow areas. But now with something like this, you can hit the top areas of objects to illuminate them a little bit more, right? So you're hitting color after color that gets darker and darker. You go shade oriented, but then when you use light on top of dark, you're hitting the top portions of it or the illuminated areas. Okay, so let's see what this looks like here. On a couple of these, I kind of went a little bit too far, you know, with the darker greens, but again, not a problem. But see, do you notice one thing about, see the richness of all those colors? It's because this color is underneath the darker one too, okay? It's not just some isolated version of this light green or the darker green, I should say, is not an isolated dark green. It's over the top of, what was it, two or three greens that came before it. That way, those shadows look really rich in value, okay? Because you can see the other colors showing through it. Uh, because dye-based inks, alcohol inks, they're transparent, okay? So the under colors are not lost, even if you cover them up completely, okay? So adding this in, I don't know if you can see kind of the changes here. This is kind of a real subtle. You can see it when I add it into um, some darker areas. 
let me get the white pen. You can see it a little bit easier, okay? Now the white pen, of course, is going to be the lightest color and you're kind of reintroducing white to an area that, you know, no longer is reflecting it in terms of the trees. So we're going with the white and where do you add that? You add that on the top areas of all these areas. See right here where those white areas or lighter areas are within these trees like that. I'm just going in and adding that on the top portions of it. So you can look for the lighter areas within the designs and you're hitting this on those areas, okay? Now, if this was a nighttime scene and these trees got really dark, maybe you wouldn't have, you know, so much white unless there was like moonlight shining on it or something like that. So you adjust accordingly, you know. You don't have to use this, uh, these highlights or something like that, but I do think it looks, makes things look much more dimensional. Now, down in my water areas, I did go in and color, you know, there's some small rocks down in those areas, so um, you can't really see the, the rocks sometimes because I just colored them all in. But you can go back in and you can redefine some of those lost forms, like this fence right here, this fence got colored in. Yeah, the ch you know, because I just didn't avoid it. It's a, it's a small object, so. Uh, let me see this. Let me, this might be my one that's not it's getting kind of dry. Okay, much better. So see this right here? I'm just redefining my fence like so. All right on the tufts of some of these grasses, on the top portions of it, on the top portions of some of these rocks that got a little lost in here with all my coloring. I'm just kind of highlighting the tops of them, okay? All right, so we're rendering form. You're putting in that little highlight in there. You ever see anyone do um, draw eyeballs or something like that or paint them? And they put that little tiny sparkle on it. Or there's like words, you know, like block lettering. Then they put that little highlight on the top of it, making it look like it's capturing some light. That's what you're kind of doing here on the various objects okay you're putting in that little sparkly touch and believe it or not if you're observant enough well you kind of have to be specifically going and looking for it but this little highlight that we're doing here with this white pen it is all around every single one of us right now okay so let's look at this pen right here. See this little glare? There's that little dot that this dot is representing down here, okay, on this pen. Um, I don't know, let's see if my fingernails, I don't have manicured fingernails, you know, but see this little light, light like that on that? Look at this one right here. Here's this whole light on this one right here. Uh, object like this. See, there, here's this lighting right here. I'm doing, you know, this is a line right now, not a dot or something like that, but certainly a reflective area like that. But see this right here? See that little highlight right there? It's because it's on the corner of this, right? So it's like on the top tufts of these, okay? So if I go like this, see on the top of my knuckle, there's this little highlight, and that's what you have right down there in those forms, okay? It's not always white, you know, if you have a white light that's reflecting off of it, then you'll see it, okay? Certainly like this, whereas the white highlights, it's right here. But that little subtle one is right here because it's right on the edge of this, right? If you turn this in space, those little highlights show. And it's not always on things that are completely reflective. Um, oh, you know, I, Here's a pair of scissors that's like flat black, all right? But you can see little highlights throughout here. And it's usually where there's, you know, a difference in a change of like a ridge or something. Here's that little highlight on this little black dot right there, right? See that? It's like on the little top. So if you put a little white dot, if you were rendering this right here, 
Here's the different shades on here. This is all the same silver, right? But look at this. This area right here is going down like that. So that is a different color or a different shade than this portion. Even this top shade right here varies from light to dark like that, right? And what are we talking about here? Okay. See the rooftop of the covered bridge? It's going from light to dark. Now look at my scissor down here. It's going from, this is the whole area right here is flat going from light to a little bit darker. It's not like black or anything back there, but see the way it captures some of that light. It's different, right? So that's what we're doing here. There, it's really glaring like that. There, it's, you know, really changing from really light to really dark like that. And that's what we're doing here. So let's, let's bring that into this form here a little bit more. Let's emphasize it a little bit more, okay? So let's go with uh, this. Let's take this right here, the side of this, and let's vary it a little bit more. Let's go with a little bit. I'm just taking a black colored pencil like this, and we're changing it. It's going from dark to light to dark like that again. So again, it just varies it. And let's change this a little bit more. Let's go with this rooftop like this. And see, it's going from darker back here to lighter up there. It changes it, doesn't it? Here's a little bit of darkness under the eaves, like that. So do you see that's where rendering comes into play like that. You have variations that are happening throughout, okay? And there's different little kind of strategies that you can do like that with highlighting and whatnot. It really makes things look very three-dimensional. And it, it's just really fun to kind of bring out the forms like that. All right, it involves using, you know, different values of things like that. Um, instead of like, say, one color of red, it's a lot of people, saying people will think of coloring, they'll think of, okay, there's a, a bridge and it's a red bridge. I, what, you know, color of red should I use? They're not really thinking about using something like, you know, these colors that were used to get that red. Now you don't have to go through all of these. I just happen to have them, okay? But all these colors were used right in that red right there. And I did use a little bit of colored pencil too, but so I kind of just built it through these tones right here, okay? Just leading up to it. Like I said, I, I kind of went overboard a little bit because I was a little bit scared about using this red right here. So I used a little bit in that and I blended it out with one of these other ones like that, okay? Just so it doesn't look so, you know, I don't know, too extreme. Let's see, let's go with a little bit more. Let's, let's, let's say uh, the Historical Society gave it a little bit of a facelift over the... Uh, the summertime and preparation for, uh, you know, this season right here. And let's go in and just add another layer on there. Let's make it a little bit brighter of a red, you know. Something like that. Okay. But you see we have a little bit of variation in there. That's a little bit more, more varied now. But you can see all that kind of rustic kind of, uh, you know, effects in there from the variations of tone. You wouldn't think to, you know, someone, if you gave a card, this card to someone like that, they're, they're not going to be kind of thinking about that. But it does look so much more dimensional as a result. And like I said, it's just kind of fun to do. Okay, let's go with another example of this kind of rendering style. Let's go back to... Um, the colored pencils for something like this, or let's let's do a fusion of it, okay? Let's do um, kind of more fall tones, and let's go with um, something like, uh, let's see, let's go with something like this. Let's use these colors as base colors for this entire piece right here, and then we'll vary it a little bit more using colored pencils, okay? You can go directly with colored pencils only on it, but this kind of gives it a really good head start, okay? So I'm just filling in this whole you know, composition right here with one color, okay? I don't know if I'll go, I, I might not go in the water. I don't know if I want this brown in the water. I want that, you know, that uh, um, water to be reasonably clear, you know, to go fishing in. <laughs> 
or whatever we whatever we end up doing with this card later on. I am smearing around some of this ink a little bit. I really re-inked my uh, black pad recent, you know, right before I stamped this scene out, so it's a little bit smeary. That's not a word, but... Okay, now right here, I'm going in and adding in a little bit of uh, those variations in form. My tip is coming out of this one. There we go. I felt it go back in there. I don't know how it came out. Okay, going in like that. Let's see, let's not go too much with this one. This one's pretty bright. Oops, I put my finger there. Uh, and then this one right here. Or is this the one that I just used? Maybe this is the one that I just used. All right, so that is that. Now oh, let's go on the side of this covered bridge too. Let's go on the inside of the covered bridge too. See these fences right here? I, I don't bother working around those fences because it's just too much of a hassle. I just go and reclaim that white of the fence. Not that it'd be a white fence, could be a brown fence. But I usually just reclaim that with the uh, the paint pens, okay? All right, so we have those tones kind of established. I got a little bit smeary, you know, um, with uh, some of those colors because it was, like I said, it's kind of going into my... Uh, the black, wet black there a little bit. Let's move this up a little bit. I notice I've been working a little bit off screen lately. This is because my desk is like full of clutter here. I really do need to clean out like I did uh, back in January. <laughs> One of the, uh, the photos that got some of the most views was um, my clean desk, which doesn't happen too often. I did a little bit of a uh, beginning of the year cleaning. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go in with some colored pencils. Let's bring in the fall tones on this one, okay? All right, let's not get things too confusing here, but let's go with a um, kind of a lighter green, medium green, a little bit darker, okay? I don't have too many super dark greens right here, but it's a little bit lighter. I guess this would be the medium like that, okay? And let's go with some light tones. Let's, let's cut out some of these too. I, I, you know, I don't want to go with too many here. Let's let's simplify a little bit. So fall tones and those you know fall colored trees that we'll do on this one, and then our brown tones again. So let's go with a here's a little bit of a light brown, darker brown, and how about black like that? A little bit of a lighter blue and a darker blue like that. Okay. So it looks like we are getting ready to render here, okay? We're gonna be coloring with them, but we're going to be doing selective coloring, especially with the darker tones, okay? With the lighter tones, you can get pretty good coverage. So that's what I always refer to as my base layer coats, usually with uh, stamping. Okay, so let's just go, let's start off with the blues. How about that? I usually end with the blues, but let's just start this one, okay? So I'm going in with my blues right here, or blue right now. And I'm getting a pretty good coverage, okay? So anywhere where there's going to be blue, even a darker blue, I'm using the lighter blue first, okay? And I'm getting pretty full coverage. I have a little bit of area that I've left a little bit white. Just, I don't know, I, I think it's good to in water areas to retain um, Kind of a lighter area now here is a darker blue this is an ultramarine here the first one is kind of more turquoise i should say uh aquamarine huh ultramarine and aquamarine all right so this is the darker blue on here i'm not getting too much coverage this darker blue is like a really hard blue um in terms of the the uh the colored pencil um whatever, relative softness, hardness, okay? But do you see that little bit of variation in there? Let me go with a little bit of a, see if this one's a softer blue. Yeah, here we go. See, I'm able to get a little bit more of a shadow work in here. And again, I'm looking for the shadows, in this case, of the rocks or the edge of the water, the shoreline, okay? But do you see that rendering in there where it's a little bit darker? In again, I'm hitting the shadow areas that I have drawn into the design. Okay. 
I mean, a shadow might be this little dot like that of color, okay? All right, those are our blues, you know? All done with that water. That water area was a small area. Okay, now let's go in with our greens here. We have a little bit of a base coat of some of those browns, you know, for sure. But let's go in with some of this green right now. Okay, it looks like I went into my road a little bit, but that's all right. And I'll work around some of these rocks down in this grassy uh, slope area in the side of the road. Like that. Let's make this area underneath here kind of green as well. You can put some greens up into your trees too, you know, uh, fall tones. You know, there could be some greens up here, a green tree. Uh, interspersed with the, you know, the ones in full color. You can make some of this um, lighter green a little bit more vibrant, okay? Now, moving on to our darker greens like this. What am I going to be looking for? I'm going to be looking for... Um, I should have had one more of these, you know, I always keep a black and white version. But I'm looking for my darker areas within my design. So there's shadows in here already, and I'm darkening those shadows. And I'm kind of working out from those shadows a little bit. I don't have to just go only on those shadows, okay? You can work other areas that can be kind of darker in general. But I am kind of targeting these darker tones or darker applications too. You know, you can press harder with your colored pencil too. There's that green right there. It's a little bit of hard green on this paper right here. This paper's kind of a satiny kind of a semi-gloss. Here's a darker one, okay? Again, hitting kind of my darker areas for variation and rendering. We're saying that this grass in here isn't just like this flat grass that's uh, colored uniformly, you know, with the same kind of approach. We're going in and kind of adding these shadows down here. And again, you're not a slave to only where I've established shadows on the designs, you know, but just in general, you can use those as kind of a guide as far as like suggested areas to fill in with your darker tones. All right, so see that? You see some variation through here. Again, it's not just this. This is what this would look like if I just colored it all in uniformly. Look at the difference between this green alone and the, this area right here. See how much more rich this area is, okay? You can see it here in the paint pens like that. See, this is all one tone. Now this is colored pencils and this is markers that are brighter. But see that right there? I think I'm, I'm gonna go in here and add a little bit more brightness to this um, grassy area with the light green again. Now that I see it, let's get a little bit brighter and more exciting with this color like that. All right, so see that right there? A little bit more vibrant. And remember, I still have black that I'm going to be using on all these different areas. Let's have some fun with some fall splendor, fall, you know, tones, okay? Going over it with the yellows right here, or the yellow. This is a little bit more of an ochre, it looks like. Yellow ochre. Oh. Hey, I'm pretty good, huh? Identifying colors. I, I usually don't read the colors of my, you know, marker or markers or pencils, especially pencils. I'm just kind of going for lighter version, a darker version of whatever, you know, kind of is going to suit me. Okay, let's bring a little bit of this color onto the rooftop like it's reflecting some of that color of the trees. Okay, let's move on to our next tone right here. It's a little bit of a, you know, let's see, scarlet red. Let's bring some of those tones right up into these trees. You can hit the shadow areas a little bit more. This red happens to be reasonably soft, so it's allowing me to um, apply over the tops of these um, 
other layers of colored pencil that have already been laid down. Sometimes on these smoother styles of papers, you can achieve a little bit of a sat super saturation with colored pencils because you know you get a decent buildup of that wax from the colored pencil, and uh, you know you're you kind of trying to apply more and more of it, and it just won't transfer because you don't have any of the uh, you know the relative whatever tooth of the paper was there before it's kind of been filled in so um you know a, a matte paper might be better for um well i know it'll be better for um colored pencils but i like the impression quality of like a semi-gloss paper you know you get a really beautiful impression on smoother types of uh smoother types of papers especially with uh high detailed images all right so going in with this one right here we do have one more red to go so maybe i'll just jump to that one right now but there's your variation in there see those different um, areas of light and dark within here okay let's go to this one what is this called crimson red all right so let's go in here and really get some of these crimson this crimson red is really great uh soft red uh, pencil right here so it, it really allows me to go in here and color over just about anything that i've already laid down even if it's really built up Oh, yeah, I forgot about... I don't know if I'm going to do this covered bridge in red because it'd be red against red, right? That might be a little bit too much. Let's go with some really bright ones in here, though. Let's go give this a pretty good um, saturation, you know, of that. But again, I do have some variation still happening within there, right? I get a little bit chicken with... Uh, like super bright reds at times but then when i look at photographs it's like oh my god that is so brilliant of a, a red in the background it just really stands out so i'm getting there i don't grow up in fall types of full color like this at all <laughs> but i have visited it and it sticks in your system after seeing it here's a little bit of orange people that uh, watch my videos it's like stop talking about maine i can't help it i've been there once and had like acadia national park basically to myself that's what it felt like at least because I never saw anyone on, on any trail that I went on. Parking lots were empty. There might have been one other car in some of the lots that I went to on some of those trails. But uh, pretty much I was thinking I park in there and I think, man, during like the, the busy season, there wouldn't be any parking available because some of those parking lots had like 12 spots in it, you know, for certain trails. All right, so see, there's some brown right there. This is a light brown again. Okay, let's do this thing with where we're rendering the rooftop a little bit differently than this, you know, from the front and back of it, maybe. Okay, let's do this on the road. A little bit toned down like, down like this, and maybe the side of the road gets a little bit darker where it kind of meets the grass. But watch this road vary a little bit from maybe it goes dark to light to dark again okay let's go with the darker brown let's add that darker tone on the side of the uh the bridge like this so that 
it's a different tone from the front of it right there, but let's also vary it from front to back or something like that. Let's just try it this way. Let's go with a darker tone up here, and I'll use a little bit lighter as I go. So it's going from darker here to lighter in the background. Maybe the rooftop, let's do it differently. Let's go dark in the back and lighter in the front like that. So I'll go dark back here. Maybe the trees are casting a shadow on the rooftop in the back of it. Like that. See, this goes a little bit from dark to light down here. And this goes from dark to light, you know, back to front. This one goes dark to light, front to back, you know, because different light is hitting it differently. Uh... Okay, so let's see. Let's go a little bit more on the side of the road right here. Okay, see this right here? See the road is differently, different tone like that. See that variation right there? If we just colored in that whole thing, we wouldn't have this kind of nice varied um, lighting within the piece. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's go on the inside of that bridge a little bit. This is what I do. I, I forget to kind of do some, you know, some different tones in the background as well um, through these um, different windows. So even some of these windows, it's kind of, you know, just the inside of the bridge. So, you know, put some of that brown like that in there, like it's a, in the shadows or whatnot, like something like that. And let's go to black. I think it's time that I sharpen this black one of these days. I haven't been sharpening my colored pencils. I do sharpen just with a regular, you know, electric sharpener, but I don't sharpen it all the way. I don't go into the sharpener until it goes and it stops, auto stops, because it's too sharp of a tip. I just go straight in. Don't put any weight to it one way or another. You just go straight in and out, okay? If you bend it a little bit, if you put too much pressure one way, it might uh, break on you, the leads. But my leads never break on me. I just go straight in and straight out like that. Okay, adding in some of those shadow areas using this black pen, uh, colored pencil, that is. Okay, let's add a little bit more shadow underneath this tree right here, okay? Oh, here's a little sand area or on the side of this uh, shoreline right here. See this kind of darkness underneath the tree like that? Doesn't that look good? Let's do that over here on this one a little bit more too. Let's bring in some of this black colored pencil. I'm kind of going for a little bit of a gray tone. I'm not going for like a super dark black or anything like that. Okay. Maybe add a little bit of shadow work down here in this water. Oh, see that right there? It's looking a little bit more rendered, you know, each step of the way. A couple different views of the, uh, the bridge. I like that red one, I have to admit. Uh, okay, let's see. Now, on this one, let's go ahead and bring some paint pens into it. Why not? Okay, let's go with... Um, Let's see. Let's see if this one will show up on here. Did I already put away my white one? I think this is it right here. Oh, here's another brown. I was looking for that one. It's a little bit of a warmer brown. Let's bring that into the mix here. Down the, uh, the road. All right, now let's see. How about that? Okay, so let's hit some of these trees with some, I don't know if these aren't really lighter tones, but we'll start off with these ones right here. 
And then maybe we'll work on a little bit of a tan here. Yeah, let me see. Did I already use one today? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was this one. <laughs> no, they they all need shaking up. I, I thought I used one of those. Maybe I didn't. Oh, you just used the green and the white on that one. Okay, so yeah, there's a little bit of red. Well, this is red, not a little bit of it. And this one's pink right here. But let's bring these into these trees right here. Now, this isn't really highlighting because this red is... Um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a darker red. So I'm putting that in those darker areas, roughly. Maybe not where it's black on the design, but just right above it. Okay, but this gives those leaves a little bit of you know, kind of pop. A little, they, they, it makes it stand out a little bit more. Now, again, with the paint pens, I tend to work from dark to light. Okay, I'll lay down some darker reds and then put in some, you know, lighter tans or something like that, orange, whatever you want um, in your color scheme. And then you'll end up with white in the transparent kind of uh, applications of ink and even colored pencils I work from light to dark. So is that a little bit more vibrancy with those trees in the background now? Let's put a little bit of this red down in here, you know, so that ground cover. Ground cover little bushes often are also turning um, with the fall color schemes, okay? And it just makes it so that this area down here and the area up there aren't quite so different in terms of, uh, you know, the, uh, the color schemes that are thematic through like an entire landscape usually. Okay, this is an orange right here. I am going to use some orange. I don't really have a super bright orange, but let's use some of that. Now this one is lighter, so I'll add this in the lighter areas of my branches. I like that red, so I won't go too much with the orange there, okay? Okay, and I think that is that, all right? So, I mean, you're not having to do like a ton of work with this, okay? Highlighting could be, you know, very targeted and sparse. I mean, you can, or you can use a lot of it too, but it doesn't, you don't have to, okay? All right, let's see. Let's just go skip to all the way to white, okay? I think you get the idea here, but look at that glowing type of, uh, you know, fall foliage in the background. White has quite you know, the, um, the uh, contrast, potentially, when you're putting it next to something that's quite a bit darker. Here's the fence here. Uh, okay, now on the top tufts of these trees, let me turn this like this so you can see it happening where my hand isn't in your way. Okay, so see I'm adding it on the top sides of these little uh, trees and bushes, okay? In the darker areas, I'll use a little bit less, like down here. But see how that stands out a little bit more? And on top sides of this one, you know, where you add more of it, it maybe it's capturing more light, reflecting more light. I'm starting to take in some of that ink from the uh, the previous colors into my pen here. So get it flowing really nicely again, okay? So that white really stands out really nicely, doesn't it? So those highlights again, okay? Down my rock areas. Yeah, it's just too hard to kind of avoid small rocks um, 
you know, when you're coloring with markers or colored pencils even. So you just go and reclaim it with your uh, paint pen when you're done. Or, you know, not when you're done, but when you're done with that coloring in those areas. And so it's not a fussy process at all. You're not having to kind of avoid a lot of things in there. Okay, let's hit our grassy area. Tops of the tufts, you know, a little, a little concentration of uh, highlights. Okay. Let's see, let's put a little bit of this texturing uh, on top of the rooftop, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's uh, on some of these slats or something like that, or on the top surface like that. Maybe I put too much of it. You can just go back in and color it with a little colored pencil. I put a little bit too much on that rooftop, so I'm just going to go in and color that back out again. Add too much color, you put the white pen in there. Add too much white pen, you add the color right back over the top of it. But anyways, look at all these little shimmery sparkles in here, you know, with the use of uh, rendering kind of techniques on there. Look how rounded um, the different forms look. Um, you know, and like I said, you can, you can mix and match, you know, different types of uh, um, coloring in here. I mean, I just went with um, my colored pencils in there but again you can mix and match you can add you know if you want to go a little bit more vibrant in areas then use uh, some alcohol pens or whatever you have you know to really zip you know put a zip into uh, you know the brightness if you need it like so I am coloring in a lot of my dots now my white dots are looking red but just looking at that I thought yeah let's bring in a little bit more excitement to it go in with your darker tones and just blend it out a little bit you know, with a lighter tone. This one's not too light, but uh, it's good to blend out those darkest and brightest of uh, alcohol marker, you know, colors. But go for variation, okay? And really be observant in terms of your um, forms, okay? And again, you're not having to reinvent them or something like that. They're all within the designs themselves, okay? And just be kind of, uh, you know, uh, aware of those um, little areas. Sometimes when you start coloring, you start to lose the forms too a little bit. So, you know, you just kind of reestablish them with a few dots or something like that. Or, you, you know, a lot of times I'm just making it up a lot of times, okay? I can't see certain forms at all anymore sometimes. So I just kind of put a few dots here and there, and then it you're faking it, basically. Okay, and that I'm doing that all the time, okay. And you get better at it, um, you know, with a little bit of practice. It doesn't take a lot of practice, though. Okay, so I'm just kind of burying my red a little bit. Not in terms of covering it up completely, you just put putting some highlights back in over the top of it like that, okay? And here we got our, our, our here we have our spring and fall color scheme. Look at the variation in values within my road here, kind of leading in there. We leave those areas a little bit lighter. Rooftops are typically lighter with the overhead you know, top lit, you know, lighting coming from the sun. Variation in our water, darker in the shadow areas, lighter as it moves out like that, okay? Variations in our grasses, could use a little bit more of a brighter um, areas within there, huh? a little bit more exciting grass maybe, like, you know, uh, warmer tinges here and there. Or brighter tinges, I should say. Yeah, a little bit of that. Like so. But you get variation in everything. There's variation in the forms in here. 
variation in our objects, even on the same sides, there's a little bit of variation in terms of um, values and tones, grasses, anything like that. You just vary it and things look a little bit more dimensional that way. And um, objects can look more three-dimensional in terms of space. So if you're doing landscape types of stamping, you know, you want to represent depth um, within your spaces. I guess I'm not, haven't been on the uh, video. I'm back out here hiding. <laughs> but anyways, practice your rendering. A lot of times it means that with your darker tones, you're just not applying it as much. It's more in the shadow areas of your objects and whatnot. It's kind of from those medium tones and on. You're a little bit more selective with your placement of it. You can get really good, you know, full coverages with your lighter tones or base layer colors. And uh, just when you start moving up, become a little bit more selective. And then, you know, if you're ready for paint pens, paint pens can really add a lot of excitement into just about anything, not just fall color imagery, but you can see where you really benefit from a lot of these different highlights throughout here. It's even up in my overhanging tree limbs and whatnot. This is on the pearl right here. I'm not gonna do the pearl right here again because I just did that one yesterday, but I wanted to stamp that one out again. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll finish off maybe a nighttime type of scene uh, with a covered bridge. Okay, so anyways, rendering with uh, your various media and whatnot. I hope this came in handy for you. And if you have any questions, please write it in the comment section below. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the uh, like button. Um, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, thanks as always for tuning in to the Stampscapes channel.